Okay, I'm hoping this is going to be the shortest video of the whole class, and that is how to do loops. There's a lot of really complicated and algorithmically complex things you can do with loops, but I'm not going to get into that stuff now. This is just the very basics of the syntax of loops. So hopefully this will be really short. I'm going to show you a simple while loop and a simple for loop. So we'll start off with the easy one, the while loop. As you can see, it looks somewhat like an if statement where there is the word while and there's a condition inside of parentheses and then there's a block of code. And hopefully, as you might have already guessed, while the condition is true, it's going to keep repeating the code inside of the block over and over and over and over again. So the way it works is the moment it hits the while loop, it checks the condition, it says, are you true? If it's true, it will enter the block, execute all the code inside, and the moment it hits the end, the end basically tells it, go back to the beginning and check the condition again. Checks the condition again, if the condition is true, it'll come inside of the block again, execute all of the code inside, hit the end. The end will send it back up, checks the condition again. Eventually, if the condition turns false, it will then proceed with the rest of the program. And that is, in essence, the while loop. So I've provided one example here of why you might never want to do a while loop. There's lots of reasons, but uh, I think this is a pretty good uh, example. And that would be error handling. So I want the user to give me a positive number, but they might fail an infinite number of times. So I basically want to keep going and going and going until the user gets it right. So the way that looks is enter a positive number, and I say negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 5. I just can't get it right. But eventually, if I do get it right, it'll continue on with the rest of the program. And not that it matters that much, but what it looks like when you're debugging. So it's going to check the condition condition is true and just like the if statement when the condition is true it hits the begin and enters the block so that is going to ask me the question I'm going to put in the negative 2 it's going to hit the end and from the end the while loop always goes back up to the while and checks the condition again so in this case input is less than 0 it's a negative 2 so it's going to enter again this time I will put in a the end always goes up to the top and this time the condition is going to be false 5 is less than 0 and it's going to be done that's the while loop so syntax pretty easy looks almost exactly like an if statement except it's the word while instead of if alright now the harder one is the for loop so the syntax of the for loop looks pretty much the same you have the word for and you have the set of parentheses and you have a begin and an end. The difference is if you notice the bunch of stuff that's inside of the parentheses there's two semicolons. One there and one there. So as we know the semicolon means the end of a statement. So that means that this stuff is actually three statements, uh, three instructions not just one. So there's three instructions separated by semicolons inside of the parentheses of a for loop. So I have some comments above here describing what each of those statements is intended to do. Uh, but the gist of it is this first statement here is meant to give you a place to declare a local variable for the for loop and hence uh, give you some kind of usually uh, a number to work with in order to figure out which iteration of the loop you're in. So if you kind of skip ahead a little bit and look inside the for loop, we're going to be printing out the value of i each time. And basically what this loop is going to do is it's going to loop 10 times. So this instruction right line is going to happen 10 times. And at each iteration, it's going to print out the value of i. So i int i equals 0 is a variable declaration and a value assignment. 
So we're declaring a local variable i, which is local to the for loop, and giving it an initial value of 0. So basically that instruction right there in front of the first semicolon is your index variable declaration. We're going to use that variable so that we always know which iteration of the loop are we in. Are we in the first iteration, the second iteration, the third iteration, and so on and so forth. So we'll come back to that because that's I guess kind of the hardest one to understand. The middle one is easy. That's just the condition to keep going. Just like before with the while loop, had, it had a condition to keep going. So our condition to keep going is i is less than 10. So what we declared i previously and said i, equals to, I is equal to 0. So at first, that condition should be true. And this last instruction is going to be an instruction that gets executed every time you hit the end. So this instruction is only going to happen once at the beginning. It's not going to happen at the beginning of each iteration. It's going to only happen once at the beginning of the entire for loop. But this last statement is going to happen every iteration at the end. So after the first iteration, when we hit the end, i is going to increase by 1. After the second iteration, i is going to increase by 1. So by combining all three of these, this says start off with a variable called i, give it the value of 0. This says every time we reach the end of the block of code, increase i by 1. And this says keep looping until i gets to the point where it's not less than 10 anymore. So if you combine all three of those, it's going to execute the block of code, increase, by, increase i by 1. Execute the line of code, increase i by 1. Execute the line of code, increase i by 1. And it's going to keep doing that until i is less than 10 becomes false. So we can kind of see what that's going to do. And I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to show you that. So it's going to basically print out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But understanding the mechanics of these things is good. That's kind of the advanced mode of, of the for loop. But more than that, when, um, when a programmer looks at a for loop, they kind of see um, a device. And you know, most of us, we could, be, we could do this. We type in like 4 int i equals 0, i, i is less than you know, any number, i plus plus. We type that in without even thinking. Because this is this device is used so often um, that it's kind of a formula for do this a certain number of times, and the o the only thing that really changes very often is that number. So what this loop says in English is do this thing 20 times. So notice it's the same code as down here. This for loop basically says do this code 10 times. So in addition to saying do this 10 times, right? It doesn't ha you don't have to use i, we could say system.console.writeline hello. So this part says do this 10 times and this says write hello. So that's pretty easy. It's just going to say hello 10 times. So anytime you want to do something a certain number of times, you, you use this exact same code. All you have to do really is change that number to how many times you want it to happen. Like you could have it do, do it a hundred times if you wanted. So that's a lot of hellos. Point being is you have i at your disposal if you need to use it. You could say this is the i iteration. Let's do it 25 times or 20 times. This is the zero. This is the first. Oops, didn't really work too well, but you get the point. <laughs> this is the nine. Actually, almost all of them sound good. 
except for 0, 1, and 2, and 3. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, there's only 1, 2, and 3 are special. So, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. So that's how the for loop works. Uh, you don't have to use the i, but you can. And, oh, why do we call it i? Well, it's just tradition. You can call it anything you want. You can say for int current equals, and you can you don't have to start it at zero. You can say, or we can say, we can say for int start is zero. File start is less than. Oh, actually, let's start it at twenty. File start is less than thirty one, or less than or equal to thirty one. Start plus plus. That doesn't really make sense anymore. It's called start. But um, so I'll use a refactor rename. Rename. I will call it num. Why not? For num equals 20, keep going while it's less than or equal to 30 and increase by one every time. So that will go from 20 to 30. 20, 21, 22. So that's interesting. Uh, another thing you can do is you can say start at 30, keep going while you're greater than or equal to 20, and decrease each time you enter through the loop. So it will declare num, it'll give it the value of 30, and it will say, is, n is 30 greater than or equal to 20? Yes, so it'll keep going. And every time through the loop, it'll num will get smaller each time. And eventually, it will get down to 19, and it will say, is 19 greater than or equal to 20? And it'll say no, and then it will stop. So that's an inverted loop. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, and so on and so forth. So hopefully you can get kind of get the idea uh, of some simple ways that you can repeat commands um, over and over again. So that saves you the tedium of having to do things multiple times that are pretty much the same every time or almost the same every time uh, with you know the additional piece of information that you need to know which iteration of the loop you're in. So like we said before, you might want to say this is the first, this is the second, this is the third. And in that case you can use you can also use a for loop, but use i to be able to change the output or the information at each iteration of the loop to tell, uh, to change what you want to have the data do. So uh, that is it. It's, oh man, it's not the shortest video I ever did, but it's pretty close. Okay, so loops and arrays by themselves are not that overwhelming, but then when you use them together, then it starts to get really fun. So hopefully in example three here, it will be a little um, more like, oh, I can really use this for something. So um, I think without further ado, I'll move on to that.